So I went ahead and got a lot more images for the tier list. And I thought I'd start off by just sharing how I went about going and getting all these images. Because as a programmer, when I can, I don't do things manually. I try to automate them. And that's exactly what I did to get all these images. And then we're going to get into getting them so they reorder correctly um, and don't just snap back into place. All right, so how did I get all these images? Well, step one is I just Googled a list of uh, Smash characters and came to this website, which just has pictures of all the Smash characters. And then after that, I just used my inspector. So I right-clicked Inspect, hovered over a dude, and I noticed all these images um, are exactly what I wanted. So basically, I wanted to just grab the URL for all these images. So I wanted the source. And I saw that they had a unique class on them, small in this case, image, and this thing over here. I went ahead and just used the small, and that that worked just fine. Uh, so what I did is first thing was is I created an array of images. And then after that, I filled the array. And the way I filled it is by running this line of code. So I said document.querySelector.all, or dot query selector all. And then inside of that, I set image.small. So what that does is it gets all the images on the page that have the class small. And then for each image, I just push the source on to my array of uh, images. So after that, that gave me a long list of sources. And basically, I was done after that. So not too hard at all. And then I just stringified it. And I copied this large string that it gave me. And I copy pasted that into a images.json file. So that's what this is. And then in my code, if we come on over to an app, I just said import images from images.json and that is what my initial URLs are. And then over here, I have a whole bunch of images now. So that's pretty neat. All right, so that's that. Let's go ahead and get into fixing the reordering next. So if we go over to our reorder function, uh, we commented everything out and are just returning the rows. So now we're going to basically refactor this logic to work with our row. Now I recommend as an exercise to just try doing this yourself first and then compare afterwards how I do it versus how you might go about doing it. So let's go ahead and uncomment all this. And basically the steps in doing this are we're going to first parse what the line of code does and then convert it to what we want it to do. So the first line of code here just gets the current array or current row that is being uh, moved. And the way we know which row has been moved is it's the source droppable ID. So the way we get the row is we can just say rows.find. I'm going to say x.id is equal to source.droppable ID. And that'll give us the current one. And then basically, we're going to just rinse and repeat for the destination. And that's going to be destination dot drop ID. And we're looking for where it's equal. So the find command, if you're not familiar with it, will look in the array until this condition is true and I'll return that item here. Now, if we hover over this, we'll notice the row can possibly be undefined. So we can tell TypeScript that it's expected to be find, like we expect there to be this item there, right? with this exclamation point at the end. So that gets rid of the undefined. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because I'm certain the item will be there uh, if we have this source, or at least I'm not going to worry about checking it. Uh, next one is we're going to get the uh, target. So this is the uh, current, right? And it's just getting the uh, index of the item that's getting moved. So the target is basically the item that we move to a different location. So in our case, URLs. So that's the array of... Uh, URLs that we're sorting this thing around. So this is our source, and then our destination is wherever I move it. All right. All right, so this condition is just fine. And then the reordering is going to be current.urls, and it's going to reorder the URL. So it's basically going to create a new URLs. And then what we need to do here is basically replace the uh, this reordered list so we can do that by saying rows.map. And if the ID matches 
uh, with the row that we need to change, in this case, current.id, then we are gonna keep all the values in that current row, and then we're just going to pass in the new uh, reordered list. And then otherwise, we just return the row as is. So that's what we're gonna do here. Go through each row. If it's the ID that we need to change, then we are gonna put in the new list. Otherwise, just return it. All right, here we are splicing. We just need to say current.urls and next.urls. Everything else is totally fine. Uh, and then here we're gonna basically do the same logic that we did here. So basically current changed and next changed. So we need to change both of those. So we're gonna say rows.map. And I'm gonna say if current.id is equal to x.id, then we're gonna return all the items except for the URLs, which is equal to current.urls. Uh, splice changes the uh, array in place. So that's why we're just returning the URLs. It's getting changed right there. And then we're gonna say else if next.id is equal to x.id, and then we're gonna do the same thing. And then we're gonna say next.urls instead. And at the very bottom, if neither of these conditions are two, true, then we just gonna return the existing row, no changes to it. All right, so let's see if we have any errors. Looks good. So now we can go ahead and give it a try. Switch these two, and it seems to be working just fine now. Can change it to different rows, awesome. All right, so that's reordering. I'm gonna do a couple other things in this video. Uh, you'll notice that we have this scroll bar at the bottom. Instead, I kinda want the scroll bar right here. So let's go over to our author list. And I'm gonna truncate the two divs that I have here. They're kind of uh, useless having two of them. So I'm just gonna spread the droppable props onto this div and remove one outer div. And then I'm also gonna just say overflow x auto uh, on this, this new div. And so that's gonna move the scroll bar here. And I believe I can now like scroll like this now. So awesome. Nice. All right, so next up what I wanna do is be able to not only add rows, but rearrange rows. So let's say I decide when I'm building my tier list that, you know what, I actually want this row to be below this row. So being able to go up and down. So I'm gonna add a div outside of this. And the reason why I'm doing outside is because we have this droppable and I don't want this part to be droppable, so that's why I'm putting it outside. So I'm gonna say display flex, and then here I'm gonna sit, tell the droppable part to flex one so it goes all the way across, and I'm gonna introduce a new div, and inside of that's just a button that says up. Um, so you can see that here, and now I'm gonna just change this to align item center, so it's in the middle. All right, so now we have a new button, and what I want this to do is I want to shift this up or down. So here I'm gonna say on up, and we're gonna pass in a function that handles this, and on down. On up, and we're just gonna pass those callbacks to our button. So on click. I think it'll be easier to just copy and do this. All right, so now we need to actually pass these functions in in our app. All right, so what is actually gonna happen when the user presses up? Um, basically, we wanna rearrange or reorder the rows themselves, not the inner URLs. So we're gonna say set rows and here we can actually just call the reorder function, reorder. Passing in our rows, the start index is gonna be wherever it started. And then it is going to just go uh, be subtracted by one. It's gonna be the destination index. And then on down, we increment the index. All right, so now if I say up, it goes up, and I think it has a catch can't go down any further. 
So we can add some items, bring it down, bring it up. Awesome. So now we have moving around. Uh, one last thing that I want to do is I want to be able to name these things. Uh, we already kind of have a name. I'm calling it, I'm using the name label for them. So I want to just display that in an input field. So the value is going to be the row dot label. And then on change, I'm going to pass in on label change. And then we're going to pass in e dot target dot value. So basically the new text that we want uh, on this label, on label change. And we're passing in a string, which is the new text. And back in our app, how are we going to support this on label change? We're going to say set rows, and then we're going to say rows.map, oops. And then we're going to say if the index, or I guess the ID that works too, is equal to the current row, then we are going to change the label. We're going to keep the row and we're going to update the label with this new text. Otherwise, same logic as before, we keep the existing row, which is just X. So now we have the name here. You can move these around and I can say top tier. Maybe this is B tier. Move it down. Put Yoshi there. And put them at the very bottom, maybe. And we can, now we can move around and give these guys names. So sweet. We can, again, style this a little bit more if we wanted. Maybe we can put these in divs so they are on new lines. Just wrap both of our buttons. Make it a little less wide. Uh, cool. So this is the basic layout for our tier list. We're able to now drag and drop, rearrange, add it to different groups, add new groups, name the groups, and uh, shift them up and down, which is pretty sweet. So that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one.